Hello everyone, my name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. This series is, is a plotting tutorial using Matplotlib in Python. Now, in this tutorial, we'll be looking at color maps. Now, color maps are useful to distinguish and differentiate data within a particular plot or a, a contour plot or a streamlined plot, whatever it may be the case. The reason is because humans are much, uh, humans are, you know, I mean, it's easier for us humans to distinguish data and differentiate them clearly with respect to other data. Will not just by looking, just by having an attachment to colors. Humans are very humans have a good visual visual acuity, and as a consequence, we are able to distinguish colors and differentiate them very clearly and start clearly and vividly. So, uh, if you let's say you have some data and you want to differentiate that from another data in a particular plot, using um colors, using some maps to different colors to diff distinguish them and assigning a one-to-one -one -one correspondence or a mapping between the colors and colors in the data turns out to be a very good way to you know visualize plots with with uh, visualize plots and make sense out of them very keenly so though so that's the reason why we use color maps matplotlib has quite a lot of in, in inbuilt color maps that are available inbuilt color maps and the, they are actually classified into four categories depending upon the usage and the requirement they are actually sequential diverging qualitative and miscellaneous Let's look at them one by one. So this is actually the plot I have over here, the program I have over here. Not much of a fancy program. This will, uh, all these lines are just for, to generate some data. And the data I generated over here is Z, which is, uh, which is as you see, is actually a product of sine and cosine. So the value would be uh, between minus one, between minus one and plus one. Okay. And uh, I have a fig I have a figure over here which has four subplot, which have four subplots. So when I run this particular piece of code. Okay, this is what this is what I'll have. I think I'll minimize this and show. Okay, this is this is what I have. I have a diverging to I have a diverging color map plot on my top uh, left corner. I have a sequential color map plot on my top right corner. Okay, similarly I have a qualitative color map and a miscellaneous color map. All these are uh, color maps are used to this to uh, plot the same data, same kind of data, with a little bit with the only, with a small bit of differences between them. So let's look at them one by one. First, while well, we'll be looking at uh, the sequential color, I mean the diverging color maps. Let's say you have some kind of a data which, uh, ha which, is, uh, which has both positive and negative values. Then uh, seismic color map, I mean, uh, I mean not seismic, um, uh, diverging color map is very useful. For instance, the temperature of a particular, temperature of in a various, region, various parts of a country uh, ex express in degree Celsius. Then it can be positive and negative, it can be positive or negative. In those kind of cases, a diverging color maps are very useful. The reason is because uh, in these maps, they use two different contrasting colors, and one of them as is assigned for the positive magnitude data, another one is for the negative magnitude data. As a consequence, you will be able to distinguish them very clearly, very clearly, the, by just by looking at the colors. And at the same time, uh, the magnitudes from a low, the magnitudes within the within the same side, same sign. From zero to a from a lower value to a higher value, are or, or, or higher value to a lower value, are distinguished clearly by distinguished clearly by the intensity of the colors. So when I run this figure over here, I think I'm already running this. Okay, I think I'm already running this. So when I run this over here, this is actually diverging plot. So the negative values are actually plotted in blue, whereas the positive values are plot, plotted in red. And the neutral values, which are very close to zero or slightly away from zero, they're actually plotted in white over here. Clearly, from this plot, I can in clearly and very distinctly, distinctly distinguish the two re the two regions over here: the positive values and negative values, just by looking at the colors. This is actually an advantage of diverging plot. So, if you have values which have both negative and positive values, go for diverging plot color scheme. Though they are very helpful. Now, let me minimize this. And let, let's talk about the next color scheme, which is actually the sequential color scheme. Let's say you have data which, are, which, the, which is predominantly or in completely uh, has only uh, one, one sign. Let's say all of the data is positive or all the data is negative. Okay. Neither, okay. In, the, in those kind of cases, the, if you want to make a uh, color scheme that will, pl that will actually map uh, val data from a minimum value to a maximum value, then you go for a sequential color scheme. The one I've used over here is the color map is used over here is called as grace. 
grays so it's going to go from a, a lighter shade of a gray to a da- darker shade of a gray just like 50 shades of gray i'm just just like a 50 shades of gray joke anyway uh okay i didn't close it so i have it over here so let's look at this so clearly you can see the lower values are uh, ha- the lower magnitude values are having a negative or li- having a lighter shade of gray whereas the da- whereas the ma- values with uh, which have a higher magnitude are actually plotted with a darker shade of gray okay so this way you have different kinds of uh, i mean you're able to plot the data which is uh, which is in the same uh, sign or same sign but you have but you are able to clearly distinguish them based on the by the magnitudes distinguish the magnitude just by different intensities of the colors okay now this is an example of a sequential color map okay now let's look at the third category call as the what do you call as the qualitative color map let's say you have some colors uh, let's say you have some data and uh, you want to distinguish them s- uh, very starkly with respect to other data okay and uh, in these kind of cases you don't you don't want to have a gradual transition in one color okay for instance in sequential and diverging diverging within the same mag within the same per- signs of magnitude the colors actually change from one particular value to another particular value so there's a gradual change over there but in the, but let's say you are you are in a special special scenario wherein you want the different data to be have to have different colors thereby there's no gradual change but there's a very distinct and dif- distinct change okay in these kind of cases you go for qualitative map for instance let me just open up this figure pop up this figure again and you, here this is the same uh, the plot on my left the top and the bottom they are exactly the same plot the only difference is that i have a different color map on the top and a different color map on the bottom i use the color map called as accent which is actually a qualitative color map over here here if you can clearly see from the top okay each and every div- each and every counter that is made are uh, distinguished distinguished from each other very distinct very distinctively very distinctively okay unlike unlike what you have in the diverging map or the se- sequential map where in the colors gradually become darker to denote higher magnitude or they become lighter to denote lower magnitude there's no uh, kind of one to one correspondence over here rather each and every group has its own uh, color and it's very easily distinguishable and so if you have some discrete data let's say and you want or you have some d- d- data like this and you want to Ex- specifically and explicitly differentiate them without any kind of a color and amb- ambiguity over here. ambiguity that can co- that can come in um, uh, diverging plots or sequential plots then go for a qualitative plot qualitative plot can be used for both the diverging as well as sequential scenarios so there's no hard and fast rule on hard and fast rule on it the only consider- consideration being is that this uh, consideration being is that the colors the plot should be very distinguishable I mean each and every region of a plot should be very distinguishable from each other clearly without any kind without <coughs> leaving any kind of doubts this is very important because sometimes some people have a little, have some trouble distinguish distinguish the different shades of a color for instance here if i were to zoom in this particular region over here okay zoom in this particular region clearly you can see there is actually color difference between this lighter shade of red to a darker shade of red to a even darker shade to even to a darker shade you can clearly see a difference but for some people some people uh, what they can well, they may not be able to differentiate them very clearly and even in if, uh, here the contours are very less in number and their colors are reasonably uh, vivid so we can actually differentiate them but if we have large number of contours let's say large number of contours and large number of breaks in those kind of cases it becomes a little more much more hard to distinguish the colors uh, colors even if you have a good eyesight and so as a consequence in these kind of scenarios qualitative maps are qualitative colors are very helpful because since they use entirely different colors big picking them and distinguishing them are very easy the only downside here is that the ups, uh, you don't know which is high and which is low so you, you definitely need to look at you definitely need to look at the one to one correspondence in the color map to get an idea so a uh, similar to a qualitative color map over here the last one that we're going to look at is actually the michelinus color map okay so these three have their own purposes and the but the uh, purpose of michelinus color maps are actually to speak nothing okay if you just want to have a plot that is very colorful colorful enough color, colorful and at the same time it has a little bit of qualitative color qualitative color in a property so that they can be distinguished little differently little differently 
okay then you go for a machine and scalar map the uh, the idea in the machine and scalar map is that each data has each data has its own different color okay regardless of the sign or magnitude regardless of the sign or magnitude and there there is a little bit of a gradual transition from one color to another there's a little bit of a transition nevertheless the transition is not like a completely uh, faithful like what you see in a diverging map or a sequential color map of, over here okay these are more um, uh, mean miscellaneous color maps are used for more for an aesthetically pleasing purposes if you were to use a sing if you had to use a sequential map or a diverging map like the like these the to be honest the plots are informative but if you look at them they may not be eye catchy honestly okay diverging maps are okay but if you look at the sequential map they may not be eye, that eye catchy unless otherwise you have to do a little bit of a tweaking to them but uh, miscellaneous plot tend to be a little more little how do i put it eye catchy than usually when compared all of them just depends upon what kind of a color map they use okay so those are the those are the things that you have to keep in mind while looking at the different color maps so if you want to have an exhaustive list of all the color maps the here i have i have taken this from uh, this web, web website uh, web page over here and i put the link on the top as well so you can have uh, actually go there and have a look at it so some of the basic ones i mean uh, the number of sequential color maps that are available are actually plenty and after that there are a few diverging color maps so these are the different ones and these are the qualitative color maps and the, these are the actually the different types of uh, miscellaneous color maps so if you want to have a good feel of what are these color, what these color maps are how they look at you can actually go to the link i mentioned to you mentioned to you so just go to matplotlib.org and then look for examples and then inside color look for color map reference color maps reference and then you will get to see this uh, over here get to see this plot and here uh, each of these color maps are repres are uh, shown over here for visual appeal so each color map has its name and the color maps are actually done, used over here and these are the sequential color maps and the colors that they stand for and these are the sequential color maps a kind extension of these okay and we have a diverging color map and we have a qualitative color maps over here so clearly you can see qualitative color maps are useful for distinguishing different types of colors uh, dis distinguishing different type of data and that, that at the same time they have to be very starkly clear starkly clear very stark and clear okay miscellaneous color maps are actually for but uh, actually for what you call as uh, much more aesthetically pleasing reasons and at the same time they help you uh, they help you with a little bit in, uh, in uh, with respect to qualitative color maps so use them accordingly use them accordingly so you have like plenty of color maps available and you can also create your own color map but that will be a tutorial for some other day now with this being said that's all i have for you all in this video thank you for watching and i'll see you all next time in another interesting video till then take care